all. This is Dr. Mubin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So we have not looked at the latest U.S. vaccination status, zero prevalence, protection estimates, and the overall status of the COVID. And I think the reason for that is that mostly COVID is now reduced a lot, about 10 times lesser than before. Unfortunately, we still have about 30,000 daily infections and about 300 to 450 daily deaths. So there is COVID still out there for, for Americans. So what I wanted to do today was look at various studies that are showing the zero prevalence and the estimated projection of COVID or vaccine-related protection. Summary, if I said, is almost everyone has got an antibodies. And so, of course, that is an interesting statement because there are many who, to their knowledge, have never become infected or never had vaccine. So it is almost everyone, about 92%. So there still are 8% who do not have antibodies from either the infection or from the vaccine. And then I'm sure that there is a number of people who had, for example, infection and their antibodies have waned or vaccine and their antibodies have waned. So there is a lot of mixture in there, but let's look at the data together. So first of all, this is drbean.com. Happy Thanksgiving. You will never find 900 medical lectures, medical lectures for only $67. That is a one-time non-recurring fee for access to all of these lectures. So take advantage for them. The link to this page is in the description of this video. It says something like drbean.com forward slash YT special something. So you can find it. Uh, with this, here is this study. This is a preprint study. The researchers are from Harvard, from Yale, from other um, universities as, as well. For example, here we have New Haven, Connecticut. This, so this is Yale. The only thing I want to show you before we look at this study, that one of the authors or researchers has received reimbursement from Merck and Pfizer for travel expenses to scientific input engagements unrelated to the topic of this manuscript. But anyways, that's a disclosure. And the secondly, this project has been funded in part by contract with the Centers of Dise Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So keep that in mind, but the data is very interesting to look at. Then here is the CDC's own site where the zero prevalence is actually shown and, shown. and if you see here, overall zero pre prevalence, 92.2%. This is the our world in data, and I wanted to go over some of the stats here. This is also Worldometer. And the stats here are interesting as well. So with this, let's start our discussion. And I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving and enjoyed and stayed safe, happy, and healthy. Welcome back. And let's start our discussion. So these are gifts for humanity. And they're continuing. And thank you to everyone. So as part of Thanksgiving, thanks to everyone who has been helping with making these lectures and bringing them out to you. It is actually, I was talking with my son today. It is actually not an easy thing to give from 12 o'clock in the day till 7, 8 in the evening for these talks. And it takes um, some dedication to do this. And there have been cool beans who have been supporting throughout this time. And I'm grateful for their support and their help to make this happen. So thank you very much for that. So with this, these are gifts for humanity. They're continuing. Here is a summary, and then we'll go and review the studies themselves as well. So United States Immunity Landscape, Harvard and Yale study preprint, it shows that 94%, 94%, this is an estimate, 94%, of the American Americans have been had 
have had at least one event, one infection of SARS-CoV-2. So that is one. And I'll show you the study in a second. Then if you count vaccine as well, then 97%. What does that mean? The vaccine only added three more percent? No. So actually, what it means is that there was a bunch of people, actually from a different study, you'll see 48.8% of the people were infected. And then there were vaccination that went up to 97%. And then there were more people who infected as well. So it's an overlapping number. I would consider 97% at least had one vaccine dose in the US. Can you imagine that? 97%. And then 94% had at least one infection. Then almost all Americans have almost all, so 92.2%, almost all Americans have antibodies, antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 or antibodies generated by the vaccine in their blood. Can you imagine? 92.2%. However, this is not to say that we are all good and we are done. There still are 300 to 450 deaths per day. There is The reason could be, one, the infection or vaccine-related protection is waning. Comorbidities, immunosuppressed patients, fragile patients, immune-naive patients, and misclassified. So there are many reasons for why this could be happening, but please remember, it is happening. So now let's look at the studies very quickly. That's it. The summary is done. So seven minutes in, we are done. So let's look at these, the uh, studies. So that study that I showed you, the Yale and Stanford study, it, show, it says this, check this out. By November 9, 2022, 94% of the US population had at least one event of COVID infection. And look at their confidence interval, 79% to 99%. That is their confidence interval. So it could be in this range, 79 to 99%. Then there are about 1,104,836. Actually, I just looked at the numbers before the talk and they were 107,000 something. So they are still increasing. That is about 0.3347% of 330 million. Why did I do this number? Remember, during the pandemic, as the pandemic was, as the infection was spreading and more and more people were getting involved or infected, you could not really put a number down to say, this is the percentage of deaths that would occur. But now we have reached a point, still the pandemic or endemic is not over, but we have reached a point where you could look back and say, okay, almost the whole population got vaccinated or infected. And if we freeze time today, this is the percentage of the uh, people who died. Although this is a kind of a crude number, there are many, many factors to look into it. One good way to look into this is to actually go to the our world in data, and if our world in data, you go to case fatality rate, then they have a very good uh, article about how to look at case fat fat fatality rate and what does it mean. So with that, let's go back here. In addition to this, 97% of the Americans, and once again, look at the confidence interval, 95 to 99. This is not a negative. This is two. So 95 to 99 percent of the Americans have combined. So if you take a, either a vaccine or infection, have combined immunological exposure. So almost all. 
one way or the other have become exposed. So even if you think that you may not have gotten it, maybe you got it asymptomatically. Maybe you just got it in your nose and throat and your body handled it and you're done. So almost 99%. The other interesting thing in this study was that this is very interesting. They said from starting from December 1, 2020, 2021, so that is the last month of the previous year, probably Omicron start, right? Till November 9, so about less than 11 months. The protection, see that uh, herd immunity, the protection against Omicron went up within this 11 months from 22% to 63%. So this is a protection against the infection. And protection against severe disease because of the exposure to the virus and or vaccination. It went up from 61% protection to 89% protection. And if you would look at their confidence interval as well, you would see the range goes to 99% or a higher number. So this is an interesting news for me, this one. Protection against severe infection. Rose went up from 61% to 89%. Why? Because of more people getting infection and or vaccination. So the combined group size kept becoming big. At the same time, those who didn't have infection or the vaccine, they also were doing their best to stay healthy and happy and safe and taking vitamin Ds and many other that I cannot even talk about. So it's not that some people were just sitting saying, all right, infection, come on. <laughs> they were also taking care of themselves. So here is the immune landscape of the US at this time. And then finally, I think you would agree that um, researchers from the mainstream will eventually connect that to the vaccine. So that's just natural for them. So here is what they said in their preprint. They said, increasing first booster uptake to 55% in all states. So they're saying at the moment, there is 34% booster uptake, first booster uptake. There are people who have gotten second, third, fourth, but this is the first booster uptake. They're saying if you increase it from 34% to 55% and second booster uptake to 22% from 11%, that would increase protection against infection by 4.5 percentage point. And the range is 2.4 to 7.2. What is missing in this part is for how long. But still, that is one point. The next point is more interesting. And they said, if you have a booster, then the improvement against severe disease increases by one percentage point. So at this time, let's say we are at 89%, it will become 90%. So that's what they, they added. And then they said conclusion and relevance, effective protection against SARS-CoV-2 infection and severe disease in November 2022 was substantially higher than in December 2021. Good, substantially higher. Despite this high level of protection, a more transmissible or immune evading variant changes in behavior or ongoing waning of immunity could lead to a new SARS-CoV-2 wave. I think this is also a kind of a boilerplate message to say, hey, we don't know if a new variant comes in. Remember every single time when we say the variant is becoming better, more friendly, reducing in intensity, somebody would come up and say, well, you should be careful. It can be as dangerous. Actually, I saw a study where they said, if you're just for the confounding for the if you stratify omicron infections you will see that the severity is the same as previous infections i really find it hard to believe but anyways that is a study as well so this is it the first study is done what is the takeaway of this study almost everyone has the uh, estimated immunological exposure to sars-cov-2 and or vaccine now the zero prevalence. So this is the second type of estimation where people who have been do donating blood, 
you take their blood and you look for antibodies in that blood against the SARS-CoV-2 proteins or the spike only from the vaccine and you figure out how many people have prevalence and then you project that to the remaining population. So here is what they found and I'll show you these studies in a second. So nationwide blood donor say zero prevalence, there were 143,000 participants in this, 92.2% had combined zero prevalence of positive outcome. 92.2% of these blood donors had antibodies against SARS-CoV-2, either by vaccine or by infection, and I'm sure by both. Can you imagine this? 92.2% had antibodies. So they, they then say, starting in January 2022, this study is being conducted as a longitudinally, longitudinal study of 143,000 blood donors, and the zero prevalence estimates will, will cover a three-month period. So what they did was, instead of saying one person and their antibody levels for the whole 10 months, because the antibody levels wane, they took chunks of three months prevalence data and kept extrapolating. So this is a very interesting sentence. And this is something that we have been discussing here for a long time. And that is, while this study will estimate the percentage of people that currently have antibodies against SARS-CoV-2, and studies have shown that higher antibody titers correlate with protection against COVID infection, severe outcomes and complications, there is not a level of antibody that has been established to protect an individual individuals. And so you may have seen many times, this is a discussion that, hey, what is the antibody level where I would say I'm protected? So even till to date, there is no consensus on what is the number that should be called a protective number. So it's still an unknown. And secondly, CDC said that they will end their uh, study of looking at zero prevalence in December 2022, so this coming month. That means they're kind of like, well, we're done. So I'm going to look at some of the charts. This chart was interesting, and I'll look at that with you on their site. But if you see here, 16 to 29 years of age, the prevalence is 93.8%. 30 to 49, 93%. 50 to 64, 92.9%, 65 and over, 88.5%. Then females, 91.2%, males, 93.2%. And if you see here, Hispanics, 94.6%, non-Hispanic Asians, 95.8%, non-Hispanic whites, blacks, 95.5%, whites, 91.1%, others, 90.25%. So that is almost everyone is 90% and near. So that is where the life has reached. So if I go to these studies, so we're done with the notes part of the discussion. Let's just very quickly look at this one. So this is the study that I just showed you, not more here. This is interesting. So if you see here, these dark uh, colors means more zero prevalence, more protection. So for example, if I go here to California, my state, zero prevalence, 95% con confidence interval. So here, 39.6% and 38.1 to 41.1 number of specimens, etc. Et so again, they did three months rolling numbers. So you can look at your state over here. Then if you see here, this second chart, as much as these are small chart, don't worry about that. Just see what they are overall the message that they're giving. One of the message here is this is Midwest, Northeast, South and West. And as various months scroll, you know, rolled by how their prevalence in various states kept going up. So if you see a lot of states have reached 92 and above here, if you see the upper levels, some states are below, for example, here, AR, Arizona. Okay, so then this is the chart that we just saw. Here is the accumulated chart. Let me see if I can make it bigger. I hope it doesn't break. Looks like, okay, so, so this is a US study-wide, US study-wide trends in COVID-19 zero prevalence cumulative report. So if I hover over this, 
वैक्सीन प्लस इन्फेक्शन टूगेदर नाइनटी टू पॉइंट टू परसेंट Zero prevalence, forty-eight point eight percent. How could they tell? Because somebody who got an infection will have antibodies to spike protein plus nucleocapsid and other viral proteins. But somebody who had a vaccine will only have antibodies against spike protein, and that is how they can tell. So combined, ninety-two point two percent. And so there are more data here as well. Now, if we go here to the U.S. our world in data. Just very quickly, uh, just to bring home that the seriousness is still out there. There are people who are still, unfortunately, uh, dying of this uh, uh, disease. So, if you see here, this is the daily deaths, and you can see three hundred, two ninety-eight, four fifty-five, and so on. and finally here is this number our world in data 1,104,836 according to our uh, sorry worldometer the total cases were 100,000 100 million uh, although if you look at the estimates that i just presented they say almost 90% and above of the population so this is the discussion i hope you liked it in the description of this video there are some links if you would like to support this work you can you can actually get an access to dr bean with 900 more lectures for 67 dollars it's just so interesting that for 67 dollars you have access to everything or you can buy me a coffee or you can use paypal to support this work as well and there is a link to patreon i would love it if you become a patron 5 dollars a month so let's see so lisbeth here correct that the blood donation and the zero prevalence there has its own bias similarly when you do the estimates as the yale study did they have their own bias similarly if you did a study with let's say unvaccinated there is a bias there so all studies have their limitations so you are correct in that but it still is interesting for me to see that we have reached that 92% and above number do you know why what is going on in my head this was the remember our healthcare authority started with hey we need 66% herd immunity then they said 70 and 72 and 76 and then 83 and then they settled on 92 we have reached there as well yes yeah, so m gregory that is correct the long covid has is quite punishing and i hope that long covid patients are able to take care of some of the discussions uh, take care of their situation with some of the discussions that we've been doing um so one who has no name says did it show the age so cdc actually has a separate uh, table where they show mortality by age and even vaccination status absolutely <laughs> sky frog says this is a cyber monday deal absolutely this is the cyber monday deal this is that deal here it's actually embarrassingly low price some of my friends make fun of me when uh, they ask me what is the price of your lectures and i say 67 dollars one time <laughs> anyways this is what what the price is take advantage of this so john says that the deaths are very high yes yeah, so these are the ones that are reported due to covid and again that is why i said misclassification they could still be misclassification elquin said dr b needs ad block so the thing is this once i put the ad block on there are so many sites that just simply refuse to work and i need to show the actual references instead of taking just a snapshot from there so i finally gave in and turned on the ad block 
Okay, so with this, I hope all is good. Thank you very much for it's a bargain. Yes, cyber nurse, it's not funny. It is, <laughs> yes. Well, actually, they. Um, So in medical field, I am a little more known than general population. So when somebody from that field who knows me and my work and then says, what is the price for your, uh, your lectures access, then they become almost the fall with the news of such a low price. So John says, since most people are now vaccinated, how is that we still have 300 to 450 deaths daily? So, John, uh, as I had written some notes under the deaths, so there is people with the waning immunity. That's one, either from vaccine or from the infection. Then there are folks who are just immunocompromised. And even with the vaccination or infection, sometimes it is difficult to handle their health. Then there are people who are fragile, too fragile to handle a, uh, an infection. And th this idea that somehow vaccines are killing them, that is not correct. Um, then there are misclassifications as well and so on. So with this, thank you very much. We are 27 minutes into it. Please like, subscribe and share. And there is a... Um, link in the description to support this work. I have a couple of quick notes as well. One on Wednesday, I'm presenting with Dr. Paul Marek from FLCCC's Zoom meeting. So I may not be able to do a lecture because I have to prepare for that meeting and then I may not have enough time to draw and, and prepare. So Wednesday, I might be off because I'll be on FLCCC. And secondly, um, the lectures end up in the live topic live side of the videos it is so interesting that even on the main channel page newer videos do not show up and even if you go to live you would have to press popular to actually see which one were more popular and that has created a lot of uh, uh, issues for the viewership so i was thinking of doing more recorded lectures to once again appear or have these lectures come up on the front page. So I might have to take two, three days off to learn how to do recording and editing and then put them up. So just bear with me for that and we will go from there. So with this, oh, Rima is here after a long time. Hey, Rima, how are you? Correct. And so with this, thank you very much. And I would see you tomorrow. I would not see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye for now.